Hi, this is Risa, your Stitch Buddy. Welcome to my Stitch Along series and thank you for subscribing to my channel. As promised, here is a Stitch Along video to a free design pattern I'm offering to all of my viewers of a ring of flowers embroidered using satin ribbons on a tote bag. You may click on the link below to download the free design pattern. Let's begin. I bought a cotton canvas tote bag from a craft store on which I'm going to embroider my design. I've decided to use satin ribbons instead of silk as they are more easily available around the world and I hope it will encourage more people to explore ribbon embroidery. However, if you have silk ribbons, feel free to use them as they are smoother to work with. Now, if you've decided to embroider the pattern on a tote bag then you'll first need to find the center and you can do that by folding the bag as I'm doing right now and then essentially just pinching the center and that will leave an impression on the bag which you can then mark with a friction heat erasable pen and these are good because once you iron on you know they disappear the design fits in a six inch hoop which I will be marking around the center with the heat erasable pen and this will essentially give me an idea as to where the pattern should be traced in. I've cut out the pattern as it's easier to place on a light pad and you can arrange it in any direction that you want. So I'm going to insert the light pad inside the tote bag and then sort of place the pattern in between the marks that I had um, already placed with the heat erasable pen. And now I'm tracing out the pattern with the heat erasable pen. Once you're done, you might wanna just check that the full pattern has been traced correctly and maybe run a few pen lines over the lighter tracings. Now you can use a 6 inch hoop or an 8 inch hoop. Um, I'm going to use an 8 inch hoop as it just gives me a little bit more wriggle room to work with. And as with all ribbon embroidery, you will need to tack a backing cloth, which you can do by first turning the tote bag inside out, marking the center and then placing the muslin cloth which you can use as backing cloth right behind where the pattern is. If this is your first time working with ribbons you will find that tacking a muslin cloth behind the pattern essentially helps you later on when you want to end off stitches. Ensure that you pull the cloth tightly when you mount it in your hoop. Now I'm going to start with the yellow woven rows in the pattern and to do that I'm going to first stitch five spokes with three strands of yellow thread. Using the 6mm yellow satin ribbon, I'm going to weave it in and out of the five spokes. So I'm starting here by going under the first spoke and then over the second, under the third. And you continue doing, doing this until you get to the outer rim of the circle. And as you weave the ribbon, remember to twist it a little bit so that you know, you get the natural folds of what would look like a rose.
Once the circle is sufficiently covered by the satin ribbon, you can end off by stitching a simple straight stitch at the spoke intervals like so and don't forget to keep twisting the ribbon when you do so uh, and you can run these straight stitches about one round around the rows. Now to end off at the back all you need to do is take a bit of the muslin and stitch the ribbon through it without piercing the main fabric and snip off a tail which uh, you will need to then stitch together with all the other ribbon tails that you'll have from the other flowers. Next I'm going to stitch the white daisies, one of which I've completed below. Now you stitch daisies using simple ribbon stitches where you insert the needle in the center of the ribbon like so and you need to pull the ribbon carefully. Make sure you don't pull it right through uh, and you leave a little pointed end for the petal. Now I'm going to continue stitching five of these petals around the center and then I'll stitch a second row of petals in between these petals to complete the daisy. To complete the daisy I'm going to stitch a French knot with three loops using a 3mm satin yellow ribbon. Next I'm going to embroider the small roses using a 6mm purple satin ribbon and this I will embroider using a technique called star rose and essentially how you do this is first twirl the ribbon around the needle like you would for a French knot and then stitch running stitches of equal distance down the rest of the ribbon and then insert the ribbon just about a millimeter away from where you came up on the fabric and then you pull the ribbon or the needle through this and as you do that, a nice little rose will form. Now, it's also called a star rose, and the reason for that is that you can adjust the little edges so that they are perpendicular to each other, and you get a nice looking rose. So I'm gonna do this again, so you do the French knot, and then you run running stitches along the ribbon. You can start equidistance, at the beginning and slightly bigger stitches as you get to the bottom of the rows and then you pull the ribbon through. So here's another angle of the same stitch. Next up in the pattern is stitching the big yellow rosebud and I'm going to do this by using the twisted chain stitch technique where I insert the needle to the left of the ribbon that's come through the fabric and then I pull the needle through by looping the ribbon around it like so and so you get a nice little puffy little bud and then reinsert the needle at the top of the stitch.
I'm gonna stitch the blue forget-me-nots with simple straight stitches and these are done by bringing the ribbon out through the front of the fabric and then just simply making a straight stitch with the ribbon. Make sure you leave a little bit of a loft and not pull the ribbon too tight against the fabric. I'm going to stitch all of the blue petals first this way and then I'll decide whether I want to stitch a white French knot in the center of the forget-me-nots. I've gone ahead and stitched the small pink rosebuds using 6mm satin ribbon and some of the green foliage and leaves for roses including the big yellow rosebud and the small purple roses. So essentially I'm going to stitch the small rosebud with a single French knot here and uh, I'm going to pull the French knot pretty tight here because I want it to be small and I'll do the same for the second rosebud whereas for the third and fourth rosebud I'm going to use two loops for the French knot and I'm not going to pull the knot so tight so that the buds are slightly bigger. I'm going to use 3mm green satin ribbon to stitch the leaves around the tiny rosebud by using a twisted chain stitch, so essentially inserting the needle to the left of the ribbon that came out of the fabric, pulling it through by looping the green ribbon around the needle and then reinserting the needle at the top. And so it forms a nice little green coverage or sepal around the little bud. Now you can do this in many ways. One is using the twisted chain stitch or you could simply stitch a ribbon stitch on either side of the rosebud which I'm going to do for the larger rosebuds at the bottom. For the big yellow rosebud, I'm going to stitch the stem by using a twisted ribbon stitch and then sort of fix it in place by stitching a ribbon stitch across it for the leaf and another on the other side. Now at the bottom of the rosebud, I'll stitch a French knot for the sepal and ribbon stitches or inverted ribbon stitches on either side for the leaves. I forgot to mention earlier that you can secure the small purple roses by stitching a simple stab stitch in the center of each of the roses to secure the stitch um, so that the French knots don't unravel later on. Now for the small purple rosebuds, I'm going to stitch an inverted ribbon stitch and sort of wrap it around 
the rows like so. So essentially twist the green ribbon a bit and then on the underside insert the needle and pull through. So this way it sort of wraps the rows very nicely. Using a 6mm green ribbon, I'm going to embroider leaves around the large woven rows and like the small roses, I'm going to use an inverted stitch to wrap the green leaves around the rows. Here's a completed piece. Don't forget to remove the white tacking thread that you used to stitch the muslin cloth to the tote bag. And I think I'm going to also stitch the white French knots um, in the blue forget-me-nots before I complete the tote bag. So I'm just snipping off some of the tacking thread so that when I pull it out, uh, it doesn't, you know, gather the muslin cloth. Now I'm going to cut the extra muslin around the embroidery so that we have a neat round look. And that also helps me with um, ironing on a fusible interfacing, a non-woven fusible interfacing that you can buy in a cloth shop. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is so that we have a finished look at the back on the inside of the tote bag. Now to iron it on, make sure you have the shiny rough side facing the embroidery that you want it to adhere to. And you must put a cloth over the interfacing before you iron it, otherwise it's going to burn through. Uh, and put the iron on medium heat and put the steam on. I'm just trimming the interfacing so it fits nicely behind the embroidery piece and also trimming some of the muslin so that it fits inside the iron-on interfacing. So this is what it looks like when you iron on the interfacing behind the embroidery. It kind of looks neat and keeps all the embroidery ribbons in place. Here's the final piece. Um, I've ironed the tote bag and as you can see you can't really see the interfacing or the muslin cloth in the back. Um, now you may have also decided to frame the design instead of make a tote bag and this is how it's going to look like when you frame it and hang it up in the wall. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy your tote bag. Don't forget to click on the subscribe like and notification buttons. See you again next time. Bye bye.